Hi everyone, my name is Mercy. Welcome to my channel. I'm super excited for you to be here and in this video I'm going to continue on with my Your World Concept series specifically talking about renal tubular acidosis. Now this is actually commonly tested. There are three types that we need to know and we need to be able to distinguish and it's actually not that bad. Although you do have to know the mechanism behind it because that's the only way it gets easy. For me, I am not the greatest at memorizing. If I learn the concept behind it, I'm able to retain the information easier and better I'm going to try to make it as easy as I can so that it's easier to understand and definitely it's important to review the material this is one of those things that you have to review so you pick up the signs and symptoms really fast and you're able to answer the question uh, even faster so without further ado let's get started <laughs> There's type 1, type 2, and type 4. So there is no type 3, so don't worry about type 3 at all. We're going to talk about the defect in all three of them, and then we'll go on to like treatment and diagnosis and all that. So we'll take it a step at a time. So we'll start off with what's the defect in each one. So the easiest way to get them down is visualize the kidney, the tubules within the kidney. So you have the proximal tubule, the uh, loop of Henle, and then the distal convoluted tubule, and then the collecting duct. So the type 1 is going to actually affect the distal convoluted tubule. So with the type 1, you have a defect in the secretion of hydrogen ions. So you have the inability to secrete hydrogen ions in the distal region of the tubule. So if you're not excreting hydrogen ions, you're not able to absorb the bicarb. So that goes with that whole mechanism. Where the hydrogen ion is excreted into the lumen, binds to bicarb, to form into water and carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide is absorbed into the cell, which then is going to convert back into bicarb, and the bicarb within the cell gets absorbed into the circulation. And the hydrogen ion is recycled. So you don't have that ability because the lack of excretion of hydrogen ion. That's so important because the urine is going to be alkalotic. In type one, this is the only one that you're unable to acidify the urine. Urine can get as low as 4.7 pH. Usually urine is acidic in normal circumstances. However, in type 1, you're unable to acidify the urine. This is a very important distinguishing factor from type 2 and type 4 because type 2 and type 4, you have acidic urine. And then in the type 2, which is the proximal, the proximal convoluted tubule, um, at that region, you are unable to absorb bicarb. Bicarb is absorbed within the proximal region as is most of ions, about 60 to 80 percent of sodium and most of the ions are absorbed in the proximal tubule including the bicarb you have a lot of bicarb being absorbed here because the bicarb has this diuresis effect it pulls on to the sodium potassium calcium um, it pulls on to um, uh, sulfate, it pulls on to other ions and therefore causing an excretion of other ions as well, almost like a Fanconi syndrome. Although with Fanconi syndrome, you have an abnormality in the absorption of all those ions. With uh, the type 2 proximal uh, renal tubular acidosis, you have an inability to absorb bicarb, and because the bicarb has a diuresis effect, it pulls on to the other ions, and therefore the other ions are not able to absorb as well. And then in the fourth one, it has to do with aldosterone. So you have hypoaldosteronism, or there's a form of resistance against aldosterone, and therefore causing renal tubular acidosis. Since you have the inability to stimulate with an aldosterone, so you have hypoaldosteronism, you are going to have an inability to absorb sodium and excrete potassium and hydrogen. So again, with remember aldosterone, what that does is it absorbs sodium so that water can follow, and then it excretes out potassium potassium and hydrogen ions. You're not going to absorb the sodium and you're not going to excrete the potassium and hydrogen ions, so therefore you have a increase in uh, both potassium and a hydrogen ion. So let's go back to what do you present in all three. In all three you're going to have hyperchloremic, hyperchloremic, non-anionic gap metabolic acidosis. In two of them, you're going to have hypokalemia, and that's your type 1 and type 2. 
and the type 4 you have hyperkalemia because hyperkalemia is due to the lack of aldosterone which leads to the retention of potassium and the retention of hydrogen ion causing the acidosis that way causing the hyperkalemia that way hopefully that made sense i really hope i didn't confuse you guys so quickly to summarize in type 1 you have the inability to secrete or excrete hydrogen ions in the distal convolar tubule. In type 2, you have the inability to absorb bicarb. And in type 4, you have hypoaldosteronism because aldosterone normally absorbs sodium and excretes potassium and hydrogen ions. If you don't have that ability to do so, therefore you're going to have increase in potassium and increase in hydrogen ions and a decrease in sodium absorption. Therefore you would have hypovolemia in this case as well. So hopefully that makes sense why in each of them you have metabolic acidosis. And the reason why you have non-anionic gap metabolic acidosis is because there's hyperchloremia. That chloride is compensating for the loss of bicarb. Remember, bicarb and chloride are going to go in opposite direction in this case. So because bicarb is lost, the chloride is gained, and therefore because of that increase in chloride, you have a normal anionic gap. Remember, there are two important ones that you need to know as non-anionic gap. As soon as they say that there's diarrhea or there's there's a renal tubular acidosis, you're going to pick um, non-anionic gap uh, because those two are the most common cause of non-anionic gap metabolic acidosis. Now, another thing to keep in mind that will really help you is the pH levels. So remember, I kind of touched on it in the type 1, you have a pH that is greater than 6 or greater than 5.5 whatever some places say 5.5 some places say 6 so basically you have an alkalotic urine because you're unable to excrete out the hydrogens whereas in type 2 and type 4 you have you're able to have acidic urine why because type 2 and type 4 you don't have any hydrogen excretion defect so therefore you're still able to uh, excrete out hydrogen ions at some point at the distal region and therefore you don't have a problem with making an acidic urine so if you get a pH a urine pH level and it's alkalotic you're going to pick the type 1 that's easy that's an easy way to like distinguish them and if you have an acidotic urine, you're going to, you have to differentiate between a type 2 and a type 4. If you have hyperkalemia, you're going to pick the type 4. If you have hypokalemia, you're going to pick the type 2. Those are like quick ways that you can determine whether it's type 2 or type 4. So what about the treatment? Actually, before we get to the treatment, what about the causes? So as soon as you hear nephrolithiasis or kidney stones of some sort, nephrocalcinosis, you're you're going to pick type 1 because it's affecting the distal convoluted tubule where absorption of calcium is occurring uh, that inability to excrete the um, hydrogen ions and then reabsorb the calcium you have calcium within the uh, urine you have hy hypercalciurea and because you're also losing phosphate um, along with the calcium you have this stone formation and the stone formation is going to cause your nephrolithiasis so type 1 is prone to having kidney stones so if you have a patient with recurrent kidney stones one of the things you want to think of is type 1 renal tubular acidosis and then with the type 2 and type 4 don't think about uh, kidney stones at all so if they give you nephrolithiasis you're not going to pick type 2 especially and you're, it's very rare to have it in type 4 so as soon as you hear a patient that has recurrent kidney stones and they have a uh, urine an alkalotic urine you're going with a hypokalemia that is dead on type 1. With the type 2, this is commonly associated with multiple myeloma. If you have a patient with multiple myeloma, they tell you they have multiple myeloma, you're going to pick the type 2 more so. If they give you a renal tubular acidosis type 2 and there's something you want to check in that patient, it's going to be whether they have multiple myeloma. So that's something that they, they could test you on. So just remember in type 2, you have multiple myeloma because the, those light chains are going to deposit within the tubules and that deposition is going to cause a problem with the absorption of bicarb and therefore causing that renal tubular acidosis. Fanconi syndrome is also associated with the type 2. You can also 
also see it with type 1, I believe, but more so you want to um, focus on the type 2 with Fanconi syndrome. They could give you a patient with Fanconi syndrome and that you could you would um, you might need to associate it with the type 2 tubular acidosis. So why is that? It's because it's affecting the proximal region. Remember with Fanconi syndrome, nothing's able to be absorbed. And in type two, you have the proximal region uh, affected lack of ability to absorb the bicarb. Therefore, they're all getting screened out. They're all, all the ions are gonna get pulled on uh, by that bicarb. What else? And then actually with the type one, you also have an association with autoimmune disease. So if they give you Sjogren's disease or lupus, you're going to pick type one because the common association is autoimmune with the type one renal tubular acidosis. So they might ask you, okay, what's, an associ what's associated with this patient? And they'll describe a renal tubular acidosis type one patient. And you'll associate them with, a, um, with autoimmune disease. You'll associate them with nephrolithiasis, uh, nephrocalcinosis, commonly, those are the ones you want to think of for type 1. Then last but not least, the type 4, remember hyperkalemia. So you have acidic urine, you have hyperkalemia, and you have metabolic acidosis that's non anionic gap. That's your type 4 for sure. What's associated with this or the cause would be obstructive uropathy and uh, congenital adrenal hyperplasia. So, which makes sense with the congenital adrenal hyperplasia, right? Because of the hypoaldosteronism. So, next would be treatment. With the type 1, you're going to treat with bicarb. You give them bicarb and therefore you're able to absorb bicarb at the proximal region because remember with type 1 it's a distal defect and therefore the proximal region is going to be fine so you can just absorb your bicarb in the uh, proximal region and therefore eliminate the um, the symptoms essentially and then with the type 2 we're going to not give bicarb because bicarb is not being absorbed in the proximal region where the defect is and it's just going to get excreted out so don't give bicarb it's not going to help however you can restrict sodium so if you restrict the sodium then the kidney is going to want to absorb more sodium and as it's absorbing sodium the uh, bicarb is going to follow and you can retain a little bit of bicarb that way so with the type 2 restrict sodium so that the kidney absorbs all the sodium that it can in the tubule so therefore absorbing bicarb with it and then with the type 3 you can give a mineral corticoids or you can give diuretics uh, specifically that is going to eliminate potassium so of course you're not going to want to use spironolactones because spironolactone does what it's uh, potassium sparing and remember you have hyperkalemia so you're going to get rid of the potassium by giving a diuretic a loop diuretic or a thiazide diuretic to get rid of potassium so that you decrease the potassium level making a chart for this is really good and better yet if you make like an outline and see if that helps so do it on your own and this way you can retain it and you can review it and you can look back at it and see if you know it on your own without like having to look at a textbook or look at other notes I think that's it I really really hope that was helpful let me know if I confused you guys or if you have any questions or comments or concerns uh, in the comment section below as always please do hit the like button hit the subscribe button and do share this video uh, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys. You always want, no, no. Normal, no. <laughs> However, no. Um, 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 no. Because we have